Also, it's super fun to be making a vintage pattern with a historical patent and modern conveniences like a serger. It's everything I love about sewing all in one. All right, friends. Hello. Welcome back. Here is the plan for today's video. I really want a jumpsuit. I've wanted a jumpsuit for quite a while and I don't have a whole lot of time in which to make one. And if you've seen the previous video that just came out about the behind the scenes of like what goes on in terms of making one of these videos that you're watching right now, first of all, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. It's very fun. It'll be up there and it'll be in the description. And it's a fun little look at all the various components that go into making one of these videos, some of which might surprise you. Either way, it can take a really long time for me to work my way through a project when I'm filming it, and I don't have that time right now. So I thought, let's do a little bit more casual video. It's still gonna be a good one. It's still gonna be fun. It's gonna have all of the aspects of a Shannon Makes video, minus perhaps the recycled yardage, because I am actually for once using fabric from my stash and it's real yardage, but it's still gonna be a really fun video. It's still gonna have tons of traffic noise in the background that drives me absolutely batty. <laughs> let's just make stuff. Let's be a little bit more spur of the moment. Let's not overthink things. And then by the end of this video, I'll have a new garment, maybe even two. You guys will have a new video. It's gonna be a win-win. So let's just jump right in. So the pattern I'm gonna be using today is the Wearing History Phyllis World War II air raid suit or coveralls pattern. I absolutely love this pattern. I made myself a warm-up suit out of towels last time. If you haven't seen that video, it's a really good one, full of lots of interesting challenges in terms of working with a lot of different towels with different patterns and different weights and trying to piece everything together. That was a super fun video, but this time I think I'm going to take it down a notch in terms of challenging myself and I'm just going to use actual yardage for this, which is going to be quite the treat. And in terms of what fabric I'm going to be using, if you remember my fabric haul video from last summer, I actually have two different options for fabrics and they're very, very different. So first of all, we have this lilac colored rayon, which is gorgeous and lightweight and kind of drapey and flowy. And then we have probably what was more commonly used for this in terms of if it was gonna be a coverall back in World War II, which is a green canvas, which is much stiffer and uh, doesn't have any sort of flow, not much in the way of drape, but it's very sturdy and it's probably gonna be very, very easy to work with. I think the first one I'm gonna start with is going to be the green one simply because that's going to be the most useful to me at the moment. Those of you who are my monthly Patreon supporters, you probably know exactly why this is going to be useful. And if not, you'll find out eventually, or if you're dying of curiosity, you can head on over, become a monthly supporter, unlock all the various blogs and videos in which I talk about this massive project that I'm going to be using this for. But anyway, back to the task at hand. There's one thing I need to do before I start cutting things out. And that is that in a perfect world, I would really like to make this have two different sets of tops. The original pattern has this sort of very cute blouse button up down the front with a collar, very 1940s, very, very cute. I would like to be able to take it one step further and actually have a short sleeve version and a more modern overalls type version where it's kind of more like a square with the two straps that come over. That's the game plan. But in order to figure out what the best way to rework this pattern is, I think I actually need to go get the first version that I already made, put it on, and kind of reassess where we are. So I know that the fit on this is really good because I've worn it a lot since I made it and I absolutely love the fit. It's more that I wanna see how exactly is the best way to sort of break the pants and the blouse section up because I know it does have this sort of belt here. And I'm trying to decide if I should break up 
the part above the belt or below the belt? Like, should the belt belong to the blouse or to the pants? And if it belongs to the blouse, then how am I gonna have to alter it when it's no longer a blouse, like this with a collar, but when it's like the traditional overalls? And is that still going to work? It feels like if I had the belt on the upper half, I think it would work fine with the blouse, but I think it might be kind of weird with the overalls and I'm trying to like imagine how that could work. Or should I just go with, should I just go with one blouse, don't make it interchangeable and then it won't be quite as versatile, but it, the what I have will look maybe a little bit cleaner than if I had the option to switch out the torsos. I don't know, see this is the perpetual war because part of me wants to be like super versatile and be able to have one garment do multiple things and then the other half of me is like, no, no, but I want whatever you make to look really nice and clean and I'm not sure if I can marry the two options necessarily. So first of all, I'm gonna get out of this because it's quite warm and uh, it's very hot out outside so that's not a great mix. And then I'm gonna sit down and like just reflect on it a little bit. Let me just sit and ponder it and see what I ultimately decide. I'll get back to you. So having taken a bit more time to reflect on the situation and what I want to do with it, I think I'm going to change up my initial plan a little bit and I'm actually going to try and attach the belt onto the upper portion of the jumpsuit. I'm actually probably going to have two belts. I'm probably going to put a strip of fabric on the pants as well that acts like a belt, but that will be sitting underneath the belt that's on the blouse. So the one that you see, the one that's visible, and probably the only one that's going to be doing any cinching in along the waist is going to be the one that's attached to the blouse. I don't know if that 100% made sense, but long story short, I think I'm gonna stay cleaner and it's gonna look nicer if I have a belt attached onto the torso. That's the game plan for the moment. It is subject to change as I get into this. I fully admit I have not thought this out as much as I normally think my normal projects up. So the next step then is going to be now I can finally start cutting all of the pieces out. It took me the rest of the day yesterday to cut out all of these pattern pieces because, hoo boy, there are so many of them. I had forgotten how many pattern pieces go into this pattern. They are taking up my entire table here. So let's flip you around and take a look at what we've got. So over on this side, we've got all of the pants related pieces. Then over here, it's the blouse pieces and the sleeve. And then down in this corner, we have all the miscellaneous little facings and pocket pieces. And can we take a split second to appreciate the size of these pockets? Pockets. There are three different pockets in this pattern and the smallest one is still way larger than the average pocket on a standard pair of women's jeans. So I absolutely love that. I usually have to use my own pocket pattern for things because I always have a much larger pattern than the given ones, but not on this pattern, baby! Woo! <laughs> Also, the good news is that I still have tons of fabric left over for potential inevitable mistakes, as well as eventually cutting out the more overall torso version, so that's good news. And now I'm gonna go in and do all of the markings and notches that I didn't get to. I did start on some of them yesterday, cut out most of the notches, and started marking things with chalk, but I can already tell that the chalk is gonna want to come off very easily on this fabric, just the texture, and it's such a large 
pattern so many pieces and it might take a little while to assemble so i don't want to lose those notches there are some key ones i'm gonna go in and mark with taylor's tacks just so they're a little bit more permanent and then we can whip out the instructions and start seeing what the first assembly steps are Roughly three eons later, I have finished marking all of my pieces and I'm sitting here going through the instructions, refreshing my brain on how this goes together. And as I suspected, the first step is to do the darts on the blouse and then do the pleats as well. I'm just gonna try and get that kind of boring prep out of the way. And then hopefully the next step can sort of lead us into some actual construction. So with that out of the way, there is still a little bit of prep work that needs to be done before we can start assembling anything, and that is both the pockets and the tabs. And that is what I'm gonna try to do today before I call it quits because I do need to knock off pretty soon here. But then, fingers crossed, that means tomorrow we can jump right in with some actual assembly. All right, good morning, friends. And I got a lot of work done last night and this morning. And so consequently, I have a fun little pile of pockets and tabs that are all sewn together and ready to go. And then I've got a couple tabs. Now on the long sleeve version, these go to tighten the cuff. I actually really like them. I think they're super cute. This is going to be a short sleeve version, so I might put a couple decoratively just on the cuff to like look like it's keeping the cuff turned up, but otherwise I think they're also supposed to go on the ankle as well to like tighten the ankle up. I don't know if I'll use them, but I have them ready to go if I should need them. Then this morning, I also did some work on the hip pockets. Now these are the absolutely giant ones that go on the hip and they're only one layer so i didn't have to sew any of them together but i did go in and serge the edge down in my pink and blue candy cane bubble gum colored thread but it's fine because no one's gonna see these because then this whole curved edge gets turned under so this is where we're at so far um the opening also got folded under twice and stitched down so got one done over here i'll now do the same thing to this side as well and then gonna be ready to start on assembly and i did look at the instructions and it looks like we're going to be starting with the blouse and actually the first thing we're going to be doing is attaching these breast pockets so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to start work on assembling the blouse and hope that that goes nice and smooth and i'll check back in with you when i've made some progress A quick word about French seams, which I love and I install them in pretty much every garment that I make because I love how crisp and clean they make the inside of the garment look. But I will say, having just used them to sew the shoulder seams of the blouse portion, that they were a little bit fiddly in this specific instance. In this case, I've got multiple darts going in multiple different directions, all in a tiny little stretch here, which combined with the notches definitely made for a more fiddly French seam process than normal. So I will say that if you're new to French seams or if you're on the fence about using them, this particular swath of fabric may not be the best instance to try them out on. I did it. I'm happy with it. I think they look great. Onwards.
Well, I've just been plugging away at this blouse top here and it is looking really cute. This is where we're at so far. So you've already seen me do the shoulder seam. I have now also closed up the side seam again with French seams, except this time it went much faster. Have the breast pockets on and I've also done some work on the short sleeves. So the instructions only cover how to do the long sleeve version, which is fine, but it means you're a little bit on your own to figure out if there's supposed to be a cuff on the short sleeve. If so, how deep is it? If not, how deep is the hem? All these sorts of things. So I started by just trying it on and seeing how long it looked. It did look like it was gonna be long enough to accommodate a cuff, which is great because I really wanted to add a cuff on there. So then I tried to figure out how long that cuff should be, how long should the sleeve be. So then I went and got my favorite blouse, my llama blouse, because I really like the sleeves on that one. Tried it on, marked where the sleeves hit, and then basically for the whole rest of the process used that sleeve pattern to guide how long the actual sleeve part of the sleeve should be and now it looks super cute it's got this little cuff on here you can see i tried pinning on the tab to see how that looked and i really like the general idea of the tab on here but i think the proportions are a little bit off so i'm gonna make two more that are a little narrower and a little bit longer so that i can sew them to the inside of the cuff and have them kind of coming to the outside of the sleeve they'll be held down by a button here it's probably going to be not a functioning buttonhole. I think I'm not even gonna sew a buttonhole. I'm probably just going to sew one button through all of this and call it a day. So I'm just gonna keep working on the sleeve, try to get it set in, and then this is really gonna start looking like a blouse, which is gonna be quite fun. realize I'm not going super in depth on the construction either of the blouse portion or the jumpsuit as a whole because this video is already going to be quite long as it is, but if you want to see more about how this pattern specifically goes together, I'll recommend this video, which is a really fun one where I tackled this same pattern, but making it out of towels. Very fun challenge and very comfy final garment. And if you want to learn more about the blouse construction, I will highly recommend this video where I not only make up a very similar vintage blouse pattern and go a lot more in depth on the various steps but also have a lot of fun tips and tricks about how to deal with some of the common challenges you might be facing when you're working with limited resources. Like what do you do if your fabric has a giant stain in the middle of it? Or how do you deal with suddenly running out of yardage and not having enough? There are a lot of fun workarounds, tips and tricks about all that kind of stuff. Really highly recommend that video. All right, back to the jumpsuit. friends, we now have what basically is a finished blouse, for better or for worse. And I say that because the reason it is currently almost finished is because I stayed up slightly too late last night working on it. And as you all know, that means I do inevitably make some mistakes. I will be the first to admit that the collar on this is not my finest collar ever. It's, you know, I had to go in and pick some stitches. If you look closely, the part where it meets right here to the little lapel is not 100% perfect, but you know what? It is absolutely good enough, and that is very much the theme of this whole video. So we are rocking and rolling and keeping on moving. So the plan for today is to power through the pants section so that we have those basically finished by the end of the day today. That is the goal. Let's cross our fingers and hope that it gets done.
something that is rapidly resembling a pair of pants. It's got two leg holes, it's got a waistband, it's got giant pockets, so the only thing that really needs to be worked on besides adding buttons to the front is this hem because let me tell you these pants are way too long the pattern is grossly longer than what I how I am built so that was one little design decision that had to be made the other one was how to treat the waistband because I had to balance my desire for durability and not letting the fabric stretch out with uh, not letting too much bulk accumulate in the waist because remember we have a waistband on the pant but we also have a waistband on the bottom of the blouse and they're going to overlap because that's how we're attaching these two halves of the garment. That could quickly start to get really bulky and I wasn't sure did I want to do the waistband with one layer of fabric or two layers? Should I interface it? Should I not? I thought about it and the compromise I came to was two layers of fabric, so one layer doubled over, but no interfacing. This is pretty stiff, sturdy cotton canvas, so I'm not too worried about the buttons or buttonholes tearing out. I don't think it's going to stretch out too much. It's nice tight weave, but it should be a good compromise between also not letting too much bulk build up in the waist area as we start to layer all these together. So that is where this is at. Then I also off camera drafted some overall pattern pieces. Now I have never drafted overalls before, so I basically just looked at a bunch of pictures online and freehanded something that hopefully should work. I did already cut out and sew up a mock-up out of the most nasty white polyester pillowcase fabric that I've been saving for just such an occasion. I have not tried it on yet. It looks a little bit like a strange bikini. So let me go attach this and try it on. Let's see how it looks. All right, let's take a look at that. I'll be able to see more once I actually look at this footage, but I think I like the shape on the back. Trying to look at the front now. Generally speaking, I'm pretty happy with how it's sitting. The one thing I'm not sure if I love is this kind of weird little bulge here, which I know that overalls, generally speaking, are like this loose garment, but I feel like modern overalls are a little bit less like cinched in the waist. This has that like 40s cinched waistline and high waistline too and I feel like it might be it's a little bit weird that this is like it's not quite loose enough but it's also not quite tight enough it's like this weird in between so I'm looking at it and I'm wondering if I maybe am just going to curve this pattern piece up a little bit so that it would sit more like whoop, like that and that would take enough slack out because I don't, for some reason, I really don't want to put a dart in the top. I feel like it's supposed to be a loose enough, casual enough outfit that it doesn't need darts. Generally speaking, the shape is fine. I'm fine with the shape. It's probably going to have a couple little pockets here. Some buttons. Yeah, that's fine. That's kind of fun. I think I'm also going to lower this a little bit. Let me mark that. I think I kind of want it like here. But yeah. Okay, so lower it a little bit, change the bottom line, add some pockets, call it a day. We'll get some uh, better straps on it. The angle of the straps, however, generally seems to be okay, so I am, I'm happy about that. Yeah, let's go make those pattern alterations and then we can start cutting it out.
So I was just zooming along doing all the panels for my overalls. Here are the two front ones. They are good to go. They've got some top stitching in them, making them look super classy. And I was just seconds away from doing the top stitching on my center back piece when, and I literally caught the moment on camera, I realized that actually I can't do the top stitching. I have to go in and undo the stitching that is here because I need to insert the straps right in here and do it all in one seam so gonna have to unpick these stitches but first gonna have to make some straps because I don't have any straps yet and the game plan for the straps is actually to dupe the straps from my 1890s sports corset I love these straps I've been looking for another excuse to use this design and the overalls is the perfect time because I don't have the correct overalls hardware and I don't particularly want to go buy it. So instead for this, all you need is some of your fashion fabric and a couple buttons. And then you've even got the adjustability here. Very nice design. I love it. I do not have the original pattern for this, unfortunately, so I will just have to take a new one off of some measurements of this strap. I'm not going to go too much in depth on the construction, but if you want to see how these are made more specifically and a little bit slower, you can go check out the 1890s sports corset build. I go into quite some depth there. say it right now, these straps are by far the sexiest part of this entire garment. I freaking love the way they look and I genuinely think I prefer this look over the typical overall straps. Also, it's super fun to be making a vintage pattern with historical techniques and modern conveniences like sergers. It's everything I love about sewing all in one. The only thing I don't really love is how much this fabric frays. Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to report that since the last time we talked, there has been much progress made and that the entire overall section is essentially done except for buttons. The straps have been made, they have been inserted, everything has been top stitched, so it is like holding its shape and looking very clean and crisp. I even have the buttonholes in here. Uh, they just don't have the buttons on yet because I'm gonna wait until I can try the whole garment on and make sure the placement of everything is working well. Now, the next big thing to do on the list, first thing for today is to go through this blouse and do some top stitching because it is looking a little bit more sloppy than I think it could be. And that, that is I think due to this fabric because the more I work with it, the more I'm convinced that there is very much something in here that is not cotton because normally cotton irons very well. It holds its shape, it's nice and crisp and this just wants to bounce back. It is not holding its shape at all. The iron is having almost no effect on it. So in order to get those nice, crisp, clean edges that I'm looking for, I'm gonna be going through and top stitching everywhere that I can, everywhere that's gonna help it hold a nice, clean edge. Fortunately, that is very much in keeping with the aesthetic of this garment. So I'm not really upset about it. Then all that's left basically is buttons, both on the torso sections, as well as to attach the top to the bottom. And then we're gonna be good and we can try it on and I finally get to see what this all looks like together. Well folks, it's done and I love it. I was able to successfully marry my quest for versatility with my desire for well-made clothing. And I am thrilled, honestly thrilled with how it turned out. And I'll definitely be making a couple more of these as well, most likely from some Ikea curtains I recently found. So if there are any vital features that you think I'm missing, be sure to tell me down in the comments so I can incorporate them into future iterations. Now, I know that many of you are just here to see me make fun 
fun and thrifty garments, but if you want even more insight into all of the numerous design decisions I made along the way, because trust me, there were a lot that did not make this version of the video, as well as a handful of bonus sewing tips, there's an extended version up on my Patreon with more than 10 minutes of extra footage. Plus, you'll see why on earth I have a sudden and urgent need for a pair of overalls in my life. As for this outfit, I adore it and I can't stop singing its praises. I love the subtle poof of the shoulders and the cute little tab on the sleeves. I adore the pleated pockets and the way it adds both aesthetic dimension and practical volume to the already giant pockets. The blouse is super spacious and has tons of room to move in all directions without looking baggy, and the pants are equally comfortable and give me a range of motion that is crucial in my wardrobe. The overall top turned out super cute as well, with the button up front and the historical 1890s patented shoulder straps meeting the more modern cut of the panels. The button up mechanism to join the top and the bottom works super well, and you have to look really close to see that they're actually two separate garments. Plus, they look great when worn individually too. The blouse gives off an Eisenhower-esque vibe, and the pants just blend into any outfit to look like roomy, high-waisted vintage pants. I can't wait to wear all four versions of this outfit, and if any of you try making a similarly versatile Transformer-esque garment for your wardrobe, be sure to tag me on Instagram and share some photos. I love seeing all of your projects. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and the next time I see you, it will be for some spooktacular Halloween-themed content. So stay safe, keep sewing, and remember to have fun. Until the next time I see you, bye!